in what seems was something that was recorded, I don't know, 50,000 years ago. I had an interview with Danja Putnam, I think that's how I pronounce her name, because I, as an individual of the internet, of the podcast world, love to get these names absolutely incorrect every single time, just to be like everyone else, you know? No one wants to be an, 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 an anomaly. Anyway, I met Donja mm, at a Marketers Anonymous, you know, the greatest meetup in the world, like two years ago. We tried scheduling this thing. It took like four months to finally get it scheduled. And then it took about six months to actually get edited. But here it is in its entirety. As always, I love learning more about the person. Um, and there's some, some fun little uh, antidotes. Antidote. And antidotes. I can't speak. What ifs? Uh, there, there's some fun facts and data points in here that I think you're going to enjoy. I believe we recorded this in late March, early April of 2020. So if time frames of when you're listening to this are a little wonky, that is why. In three, two, Sorry, that was so funny. Okay, here we go. All right. All right, Donja. Uh, I believe the first question that I should... I don't know why I said I believe. That was weird. But uh, the first question I feel like I should ask you is, when was the last time that someone for the first time correctly pronounced your name when they first like read it somewhere? Ooh. Or like they were announcing you somewhere? Um, It's never happened. Ever. So... Ever, no. And it is a sneakily great way that my parents have given me to get rid of telemarketers and salespeople because no one can say my name unless they've talked to someone who knows my name. So um, I get Don G a lot because it's D-O-N-J-E. Yeah. Um, so never Donja, which is how it's actually said. So never has, no one's ever been correct the first time. So who knew that your parents were so smart getting rid of all those telemarketers out of your life for you? Pre-planning, they were. <laughs> it's actually very conceited on their part because they named me after them. Donna, Jerry, Donja. <laughs> I don't normally laugh this hard on my show, but that's <laughs> In 2019, you had a New Year's resolution uh, that we're going to get into in a second, but is, is a New Year's resolution something that you do quite often is this one of the ones that you you first did How, where are you on like the, the the wheel of resolutions uh well i can tell you about my 2021 um which is to not use um like face makeup remover wipes or cotton balls which is really challenging um so i'm trying that for this year but basically what i decided to do was try to do something for the environment each year so 2019 we'll talk about 2018 was like i'm not gonna use i'm gonna use cloth na cloth napkins 2017 i learned how so like to... an actual like towel from your house that's cloth style? like a, a cloth napkin instead of a paper napkin but and only at home wash them yeah okay i didn't carry it around i tried carrying around a um <laughs> i tried carrying around uh straws like this and i kept throwing them away with my starbucks so i was like i'm not I, can't, I don't have the the wherewithal to keep up with a disposable or a non disposable straw when I go out, but I always use one here at home. So, um, and so then are you I like did, a, what, what do they call that person? Like a, a is is it a tree hugger? Is that a is that a bad word? Is I that, am a tree hugger. No, I will it, hug a tree. Okay, so that's like not a negative like, word. That's not a bad word. Tree hugger is fine. Not for me. Okay. Yeah. So how long have you been into hugging trees? I've been a kind of like a, I'm not like a super hippie person, but I'm into gardening and I like plants and flowers. So it kind of just grew out of like, let's take better care of what we have here and here's how we can do it. And then I just like, I like trees. It's interesting. Oh, I still want to get to the point of 2019, but like, I, I don't know if any of this is real, but apparently because of the world that we're living in and it's what mid April, 2020 by not consuming a lot of the things that we normally do. So a lot less driving, mm -hmm. um, 
and a lot less people being out. There's far less crime. Apparently, waterways are clearing up. The smog in L.A. has reduced, like all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's interesting how by not doing these things that we frequently do, (laughs) it's actually saving the world. I don't I don't know why I'm laughing, but it's interesting that that's all you had to do. Right. Yeah. Don't use all the things. Stop going everywhere. Stop going. Yeah. Does that make you feel good as a tree hugger? I feel like ridiculous saying that as an environmentalist or as an embracer of trees. um, I I like it, but I hate what we're going through collectively. So. You know, it's hard to stay at home and not drive anywhere, but, you know, it's nice that people like the smog is clearing and you can actually see how beautiful everything is. Mm. Where's your favorite place in the world to to go to uh, to consume kind of the environment or nature or stuff like that? Oh. Um, I think my favorite place I've been so far is Iceland, which is completely different than anything we have here in Virginia. Virginia is beautiful. Iceland is almost otherworldly. So that was really nature in a completely different way. I really. Why is Iceland green and Greenland ice? I don't know. Somebody just didn't pay attention when they were naming them. Yeah, I guess. Do you think that is the thing? That they just flipped left? I don't know. So in 2019, the resolution was to not buy any clothes. Correct. So I had had read that um, uh, clothes clothing waste was a big thing that ended up in the dumps and stuff in um, landfills. So like when people throw away their jeans or their clothes, or even like the DAV sometimes tosses stuff. I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't mention them in particular. Thrift thrift stores sometimes can't sell things. So they toss things. Um, But uh, I just read that it, a lot of it ended up in the, um, the uh, landfill. And I was like, Here's what I'm going to do about that. I'm not going to buy clothes for a whole year. So I did not buy clothes for a whole year. Why? So they just because they're in landfills. Why? Like what? Because like we we have a fast fast fashion uh-huh. kind of society where people replace things quite often. You buy new T-shirts, you buy new jeans before your other ones are completely worn worn out. So it's just something that we we do as a society. But they're in landfills. Because, because they're not recyclable or right yeah there's more there's and too people much don't chemicals on it. and people don't necessarily yeah there's too many coming in and not enough going out so like too many being produced and not enough being but those things aren't recyclable i don't know i imagine they're probably somewhat recyclable but not all interesting I I, it's very, the whole what's recyclable and not world is very interesting in itself yeah yeah Right. I think it's more reusable than recyclable. So you could pass along your clothing to a thrift store who could pass it along to someone else to be reused versus huh. changed into something else. Interesting. In one to four words, how would you describe what you do for a living? Create communities. Okay. Now you can go deeper if you want. <laughs> if I want. Um, I am in property management, so I am a marketer that tells the world about apartment communities and what we do at heart is just create communities of people living in small places together. Interesting. What got you, in, what got you into marketing? I have no idea. Um, school uh, were you technical skills, my technical skills. So I was a property manager. I actually managed an apartment community and I'm really good it in spite of the start to this conversation when I couldn't get my camera to work um I was really good at like um a little bit of the back end of websites understanding how computers work understanding social media and how it works so I kind of fell into it from a technical point of view is that because you were just interested in that at a certain point? Is that because you, like, what got you into that world? Because not, even though it's 2020 and people know how to do that, a couple more people know how to do it, far more don't know how to do that kind of stuff. You know, posting something on Facebook is far different than kind of really running a real legit strategy or a website, something like that. Yeah. Um, I got into it. Um, I like 
it's kind of hard to to describe. Hold on, let me think for a second. I like um, organize organizing things, and I like um, I like computers. So those two things combined kind of pointed me in this direction where there was a lot out there that we could that we could do on a computer that wasn't being done. When I first started, I had our um, first website for my property was a uh, flash website and flashed three pictures. That was it. So, and one of them wasn't even on the property. It was just like a light post, light post, picture of property, picture of property. It was super, super complicated. What year was um, that? 2003, 2003, 2004. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. That didn't really answer your question. I don't know how to tell so you. So how, how did you learn it. how to do that? I mean, because I, I was, uh, I knew a guy Okay. <laughs> and I married him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so my husband is a bit of a geek. Did and you build I the first websites a lot that of you stuff. took credit for? I cannot say that. No, we did it together. Did together. <laughs> it's been 18 years. <laughs> my secret is out. Uh, hey, pays to know people who. Um... It does. So how did you get into property management then? Um, uh, I like people. I like to talk. And one of the jobs that you kind of get into property management is called a leasing consultant, where you just show people apartments and try to convince them to live there. And I applied for a job doing that and was hired in college. So Where'd I did that through college. Yeah. Where'd you go to college? Seeing you. Okay. So, okay. So. I am let's let's role play. So I am looking to buy looking to rent a new apartment and it's 2020 April and what typically are the first things that I'm going to do? Let's say I'm going I can move in. My current lease is up. I'm ready to move in my uh May, June, July. I'm ready to move into a new place late July, August of next year. Like like what what should I be planning on and how do you start to kind of capitalize on that? to to hook me to move into your place um my people usually look for their apartment about 90 days you're you're right they're looking now hey, about I, 90 days ahead. I got it right yeah um depending on the um the market the um some markets are shorter so some are like 60 days and then some are really short like 30 days so uh depending on which of my properties it is. But I usually people start with an ILS, which is an internet listing service. So when you Google apartments in Newport News, you'll come up with like apartments.com or apartment guides. So you usually start there. And that's the broad uh, research that people typically do. And then what I do is try to capture you after you've done that broad research and bring you into my, um, my website and keep you there. Okay. And so do they learn about you from like a Google or a, a would you say apartment what? Apartment listing? Apartments.com. Apartments.com. Yeah. Or apartment Isn't that guide. the one with Jeff Bloomberg, whatever his name is? Yes, it is. It is. Okay. Yes. Um, so from Google there. Google does well for me as well. What so is? So I use Google My Business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get a lot of traffic from them as well. Because someone is, someone Googles a specific complex uh, usually it's local, like area, like um, apartment near me sometimes, or apartment near Langley Air Force Base, That's or simple. apartment in Newport News. Yeah. And then your thing pops up, and because you've played the Google game, and you have a Google Place, interesting. Yeah. I think that like it's so interesting to me that there are so many free resources out there that so many businesses don't capitalize on something as simple as Google. Google My Business, Google Places, whatever it's called these days, when all you really need to do is you know, verify the address, and then it basically is almost putting you in at the same level as, in, in some cases, as an advertisement. It's amazing to me how many businesses don't capitalize on on the way a native site wants to work. You know, whether yeah. that's a search engine or a social network, it's it, it boggles my mind. So is that something that you guys have, have played with for a while and just realized that it worked well or what was kind of the reasoning behind that? I feel like part of uh, marketing 101 is to fill in all the blanks wherever you can. So 
if you're on Google My Business, if you're on Yelp, if you're on um, Bing, if you're on Facebook, and there's a blank that you can fill out with something, you should fill it out. So I started with just finding wherever my name was listed and trying to go in and put as much information as possible in there. And um, that's basically how I built Steam for almost everything that I've done is just start just fill in the blanks as just give people as, information as ridiculous as it seems like the little things turn into big things you know people want to have these big elaborate plans and marketing strategies and they don't even go in and do what you just said I mean so that boggles my mind so it's interesting okay so uh, let's let's take that scenario where I type in Google or uh, on a search engine because I like to not give Google the love anymore. I go to a search engine and I type in uh, apartments near Langley, which is an Air Force base, I guess, close to one of your properties. And somehow in there, a Google My Place business from a signature management corporation location pops up. And then and then what? Um, and then on my Google My Business, I try to use it to drive you to my website, of course. So I have listings of my floor plans in case you want to do that and right now in this current day and age I have the availability for you to set up a virtual tour or watch a pre-recorded tour of the property since we're trying to reduce our contact with one another during this time so we do um, contactless tours do you think that's so, going to become oh, I hate this word do you think that that's going to become the, the new, norm the new norm <laughs> like come on yes you know? we've been headed that way in my industry I think we're maybe a little bit behind, but self touring or, um, the ability to go when you want to go and tour an apartment. So we're doing like where you can come in like a realtor does with the box, put in the code, get the key, look at the apartment. I think that's something that we should consider as part of our future plans. So it's interesting. The last time I rented an apartment was probably over a decade ago. Um, I'd lived in an apartment since then, but like actually had to go through that process because I lived in a place for a long time. Um, and the website, I remember when I was doing a talk at Vamacon. Was it Vamacon or Vamaconth? I can't remember. Is there an F at the end? No, there's no F. They leave the F out. I got it. Um, get the F out of here. We don't no, need that. No, you're... Vamacon. Um, so I had done a bunch of research on, on that world, and so I had looked at one of my old... Um, landlords websites and it basically was probably the same thing from like 2002 and it was it was really really interesting so do you find and, and what made me think about this is like how not inaccurate but not but how non-updated some of these websites are with things that are so simple so that when the person does go in a new norm old norm whatever to go visit it doesn't look anything like it so then the likelihood of that a listing to actually get off the table it doesn't it doesn't improve and so like for someone that is renting apartments it's pretty important i would imagine to have these images be pretty up to date why don't they do it i mean even when i went to vamacon i feel like a lot of people were like yeah they'll rent them anyway it doesn't matter like doesn't it seems to me like it's a waste of time when things could be so much more streamlined and efficient, but people just don't move. Are, are you asking about the ability to do things online or the way it looks online? I'm kind saying of... if I then go to a website from a, something similar like you, and I go to not one of your properties, but someone else, right? Cause we know your stuff is top of the line and ready, but like, but a lot of people might be listening and thinking, okay, well, I run a, a an apartment complex and I don't follow that protocol. I still have the pictures up there from my flip phone and stuff like that where I just don't care, right? Like, why do you, like, my guess is you think top of the line images help to sell mm -hmm. these properties. Up-to-date stuff helps sell these properties or rent these properties, but people aren't moving towards that to the extent I think that they need to in many cases i think there is a couple of reasons that that happens in my industry we tend to be motivated by what occupancy so like if your property is full then you know you give attention to different things and you might not be paying attention to that as much as you should so that might be one reason like if they're just full all the time 
they may feel matter. like hey, yeah. it works. We don't need to put the money there. And two, uh, there's a lot of things you do yourself in property management as a property manager. So there's a lot of companies that don't have marketing or don't have uh, like a team of marketers that try to go through and keep up with everything. So you're trying to do it and manage your property and do all these other things. So it's something that, you know, you, you have it in your mind to do. It's just challenging. So I don't know. I, I know it's a lot to keep up with if you have a big portfolio. Like if you have, you know, some, some uh, property management companies have like 30 apartment communities. That would be hard to do. I guess. <laughs> You're like, I don't understand it. They should totally do that. I mean, they're walking through it anyway. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's give your maintenance guy a camera and take a picture. Like, they, they like, I get, I get it. I just think that these pictures could sell a lot more. That's it. Rant over You're right. by me. You're right. You're not wrong. Right. So there you go. Uh, I'm interested in the flower on your shirt. Tell me the backstory. Okay. So um, it sounds like you've been like waiting to tell me about this. Forever. I have been waiting because I know you feel the same way about this because you. Ha, like I've seen you talk a couple of times and you're always talking about how you decided to um, just kind of change change your clothes for once, for heaven's sakes. No, change the way that you dress in a um, business environment. And um, and that has helped you stand out amongst the crowd and become an anomaly. <laughs> but um, what I do and what I've done is um, I go to a lot of conferences. You've been to one of our conferences before and I like to meet new people. So I post on all my social media and talk about how you should come up and talk to me and I'll be wearing a flower. So everywhere that I go that there is a potential to meet people, networking events or um or conferences or anything like that, I try to wear my flower so that they know that I am open to conversation and I'm not you know, shy at all so is that flower like a pin or something that you just yeah it's a pin i have a couple of them yeah interesting how long did it take for you to figure out the flower was your you know your jean jacket or zach miller jeans and a t-shirt zach um i like flowers so uh harken back to my tree hugging um so i had decided to do flowers and also cats i have a cat backpack that i carry and so i'm like if you see the cat backpack you know it's me I'm thinking yeah. the headline for this is going to be Tree Hugger Wears Flowers to Get Attention. <laughs> I need to write that down because that was pretty good. <laughs> Would you be opposed to that? Tree no. Hugger <laughs> Wears Flowers. What do people say to you when they see that? Like, is it a good icebreaker question? Oh, yeah. Um, people say, I saw I saw you, and I they can't say my name, of course. And I know that, you know, you said Don to come Jerry. Up and say hi. Don Jerry. So they're like, but I don't know how to say your name. I'm so and so. So it, it's been a great icebreaker. I do meet a lot of people. It's it's pretty fun. Mm. So once you meet someone and the conversation goes great, what do you do after that? Like what is where does networking go next for you? I try to think of how I can help them. So I um I think of networking as an opportunity to build a community because I'm a community builder. So if there's something, someone I'm talking to that is interested in something that I know someone else who might be an expert, I try to connect them um, and just be kind of, you know, I don't know how, like a hub in the middle of people and trying to get them together to talk. Interesting. So even though these folks might be, you know, quote unquote competitors, you help them, uh, sure. learn well i like my compet my market and the way that we compete is is a little bit different than most industries because if you think about an apartment um most of them are pretty consistently made of kitchen bathroom living room so there is uh, not a lot of variation in apartments what makes people rent apartments is the way they feel when they visit the apartment community the people that they meet there and usually it's location. So I really have a very small competitive group of apartment communities located close to mine that I compete against. But in my industry, we're pretty friendly competitors and we think that a 
a rising sea sails up. What is that? The ships, you know how I the know. rising. I know what you're talking about. Well, anyone yeah. listening, you guys get what I mean. Boats rise <laughs> when the water is great, yeah. you know. All the ships. So yeah, so we work together and, and network, and you know, if I know somebody has a need, I'm I'm definitely going to share things with them. Interesting. How do you learn better strategies on how to increase whatever KPI or metric that you want to uh, increase? We have a lot of experts in our industries and they share a lot of information. So we tend to have um, industry specific software um, and they will put on like webinars and talk to you about what they're tracking, what they're seeing. So I try to pay attention to a lot of that and watch a lot of those. Is there a community or city or metro that you guys mock things after? Uh, Yeah, Atlanta. I think is a little bit ahead of us. And then um, some of the bigger cities like Chicago and uh, uh, on the West Coast, they tend to get things first there and then they come over this way. Give me an example of something that's been on the West Coast and then you guys implemented. Like self-touring. They've been doing self-touring for quite some time and we're doing self-touring now. So literally you get a code, then you can walk through the thing yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And so before that would have been a person? It's a person who tours you and takes you through and tells you about the community. Oh, here we which... are. There's this and that. And they tell you through, walk you through a magical scenario type of thing. It is magical when I do it. <laughs> uh, it's this fun. tree over here was built in, was, was, Let's uh, stop was, and hug this tree. <laughs> what are they, what are they, uh, it's not built. I can't, I can't think, uh, planted. This, this tree was planted in 1899 and now it's 120 years old. It's a juniper tree. I, I don't know. Interesting. Okay. So, um, and that is, I mean, you gotta think that, so when something like that potentially removes staff, is that a good thing or a bad thing? There is still opportunity for staff. I don't think it's going to remove them because there is more to the process than just showing the apartment. You don't just tour the apartment and then you're there. You have to sign a lease agreement. Once you live there, you have we take care of the apartment. We have maintenance. Um, so there's still more of a process and there's definitely still work for people to do. What's the most difficult thing, well, the most difficult part of your job? Keeping up with everything that happens uh not only with technology but also with property management and trying to keep these things keep these things going (laughs) give me an example so like something happens on a property that people need to know about or like the water went out like what do you mean that 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 part as well so there's always like 500 people living in 22 acres that we're taking care of and there's things going out there and there's they're putting in reviews they're um Mm. they're talking on to us on social media we're talking to them on social media so there's that aspect but then there's always there's the fact that i have to reprogram my chatbot to deal with covid19 so you have tenants that will ask will message you guys on facebook instead of calling you yes oh wow yeah um so trying to balance the technical and the practical is really challenging. Interesting. So, I mean, so you, you talked about COVID, coronavirus, whatever it's called at this point. You know, there'll be a third name next week, I'm sure. <laughs> um, we, so from a communication standpoint, it seems like people are um, all over the place from a good job to a bad job. Um, obviously, everything is opinions, really, if, if you will. But as a communication expert, as a marketer, um, as I think that's what you would call yourself. No, that's what I call myself. So if that's not what you want to be, whatever yeah, you're no. a tree, a tree hugger who also knows marketing and communication. Um, tell me, tell me about what you guys have done to communicate in something like this for your properties. And then maybe give me an example of some, someone in any industry that you think did a poor job of communication during all this. Whew. Well, I myself have been over communicated too. So I can't really tell you who did a, poor job because everybody has everybody from the shoe place to a restaurant to a bookseller has sent me an email on how they're dealing with COVID-19 and we as a property management group did the same thing so we 
talk to our residents about how things are going to change and what we're doing to try to um, reduce the the spread of the disease. And some things that we had to change were they're accustomed to coming into the office a lot. They're accustomed to coming into our common place, uh, common spaces. Like we have clubhouses with a pool table, a workout room, and we decided to close those relatively early on. And that was a challenge to communicate to them. Like 99.99% of people were very happy that we had done that, but there was always the a uh, couple people who were like, you know, I, I wanted to work out. Um, so just making sure that we were communicating as soon as we knew what we were doing and trying to get it out in multiple ways. So we email, we put notes on doors, we change our website, we try to um, put it out through social media to make sure that we're reaching everyone that we can. Okay. I, I love that. Communicate in multiple ways. I think that so many people have done a poor job of this and it's not just during a time, uh, an emergency. It's not during, you know, a challenge like what we're going through or whatever. It's, it's always people are bad at communication because a lot of times they communicate one way and one way only. And I, and I think it's so incredibly important to, um, communicate in multiple places so that your number of participants, let's just call it a hundred, all 100 hear the message and there's no game right. of telephone and there's nothing like that because what ends up happening is you get a huge game of telephone where, Oh, so-and-so said this, or I saw this here. And then th none of the truth is there when only two of the hundred people actually saw the message and there's 98 people that didn't get it. Um, you said something that was interesting to me where you've been over communicated with yes, by a I lot of these like businesses. And so I've started and very early on during this whole thing. I tried getting people to look at this as more just like crisis mode instead of specific to the word, you know, coronavirus COVID, because you can look at a crisis. A crisis is going to happen multiple times in a lifespan of a business or a brand or whatever you want to call it. And so while this one might be significantly different, a lot of the things that you're going to do are going to be similar. You know, if there's a hurricane, you're going to go into crisis mode and you're going to have to communicate to these people. So yeah. there is no difference in that in between those two things, right? They're basically the exact right. same thing, right? So I, I try to explain to people, Hey, what would you do during a hurricane, during an earthquake, during a tsunami, communicate that same way here. Maybe you have to push a little bit more urgency, or maybe a little bit more frequency, but the style should be the same. And so what's interesting is you have brands out there that are sending out notes that are so stupid, in my opinion, and they're so unnecessary. It's like, if you never talked about these things before, why are you now all of a sudden going to talk about it? I'm not saying that you can't make a, a glimpse, take a glimpse into it, but like, there's no reason why, if you never talk about stuff like this, that you all of a sudden should start telling people, oh, well, so-and-so is talking about this, so I need to as well. And I think that's what a lot of people have done is they played this copycat game of it's almost like Black Friday, where you're getting all of these emails that say, buy my thing, it's Black Friday. Oh, it's Cyber Monday. When, oh, now it's the, you know, the coronavirus email. Here it is. The, you, you got it from us. You said a bookseller. Like, I don't know what they were selling you, but like, what's the, like, what do you need to tell me in that kind of case? You know who needs to tell me stuff like, uh, the grocery store, probably the grocery store, yeah. right? Um, I can see where, you know, the apartment complex, it would be yeah. important, right? Like, Hey, like this thing where you're going in out, but like, there's a lot of businesses, you know, the restaurants, you know, that's probably, probably of some importance. But then when they say, Hey, we're taking, uh, we're taking this seriously. Well, were you not taking things seriously before? <laughs> so wording is really important. <laughs> we're cleaning things more or that we're cleaning. Like, were you not cleaning before? So there's yeah. all these choice of words that are all very, very, and I don't even think they're nitpicky. I think they're very serious in this when they say that people are taking things seriously, but then they still make you take their dirty pen and sign stuff or sign someone's, you know, uh, you said contact list. Well, if you, the pizza guy has you sign his phone, that's pretty dirty. And so we're over communicating things that don't need to be communicated with. Like I send an email every 10, 13 AM. I don't know if you're on that list. If you are, thank you. Um, but I didn't send out a coronavirus email because it was unnecessary. It was off brand. Like, I might are you are you cleaning? Are you cleaning your stuff there in your house? Yes, I want you to know this microphone right here <laughs> has been disinfected three times during this call alone. If you haven't seen the microphone, it's being cleaned. <laughs> I actually take it and I clean it. It's just like yeah. what like 
message something that people want to hear, right? Like you, you, you guys had something that was of importance. Hey, your rent is still going to be due. We're cleaning this. We're closing that. Those are things that are important, right? The grocery store is going to be changing hours. This is how you're going to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. like you, shoe company. You, oh, uh, what are you sending me? Like, there's no reason for you to send me that stuff. But yet, people are out there doing it. You have computer companies. Oh, <laughs> we're we're cleaning our in- device that you're never gonna touch. Like, software companies. Like, what are your what are your thoughts on all of this? Uh, I think it's because people are afraid that they're trying to make sure that we as consumers know that they're they're taking this seriously and they're taking an action. And I think it also feel like I feel like I should be doing something and sending out this crafting this email and sending it out makes you feel like you're reacting and you're taking action in this crisis environment when you feel like you should be doing something. However, because a lot of people are doing it from a mall, a mass or a bulk perspective instead of, making things happen in an individualized um in an individualized manner like i don't know that of all your properties you called every single one of your clients but i could see that being very very valuable right like why do you have to post something on facebook when you have a hundred people that are clients when you could call all of them in one day and just say hey thank you for being a customer yeah. we're going to go through this if you have anything here's my cell phone call me you know i i spent a lot of time doing that and i'm sure there's people that i've missed but like I, I reached out to a crap ton of people just to say, hey, like, what's up? What do you need? Yeah. Thank you. Not me trying to sell them or anything. Are you doing okay? Yeah, I mean, like, how just, hard just is Just checking that? in. You know, yeah. you know what's funny? Is forever people have, like, been like, oh, I hate your what are you watching on Netflix question. But now it's, like, super appropriate. So now you just be like, yo, what are you watching on Netflix during this time? And, and then they're all like, Tiger King. And I'm like, oh. I watch Tiger King. I don't know that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, okay. I feel like I'm missing on like a whole uh, social thing over here that I have no idea what's um, going on. I know that Carol Baskin, this is the dance on TikTok. Uh, whatever. She killed, I have no idea what that killed is. Killed him. And um, better type. Uh, it's interesting. The first five. So I would say uh, it's seven parts, probably in 40 minutes each, maybe. Um, I love a good documentary my challenge with any documentary is having the right people in a documentary, right? So the one right by where you live, the Alan Iverson documentary, the 30 for 30 ESPN one, he's not in it and he's alive. And so I feel like there's a missing piece to that. This documentary has everything recorded and every human is alive, basically talking <laughs> in it. So it's like, you're getting it all. And so I find oh, that. Are you talking about the ESPN one without yeah, Alan Yeah, but he's not in it. Can I tell you, wait, my kid is in it. I, really? Yeah, so they have a, um, they filmed the Hampton 400th anniversary, and there's like three kids running around a pole. One of them is my child. Claim to fame, right there. I know, right? <laughs> Does he wear a flower on his shirts? No, it was an uncredited appearance by. We him, need to though. get him on uh, or her on IMDb. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Want to make a Wikipedia list? But my point is, is like it's a good documentary. It's way out there, though. Yeah. If you got five hours, then you want to watch it. I'm, ju- I'm trying to save that for one day when I'm like, you know, I've done all I can do here in my house. I'm gonna watch that documentary. So, do you watch a lot of things on movie. Netflix? Oh yeah, I watch Netflix. What are you, What are you watching on Netflix? Uh, Ozark. Yeah, I watch that. Yeah. Um, The Crown. Uh, what's the guy's name? Marty. What's that guy's real name? His real name Jason is Jason Bateman. Bateman. Is he in Hangover? I don't know. Regardless, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, well, Jason but, Bateman's but he's a very... in he's in the out outcast, which is no the um oh jeez that's HBO. Never mind, I don't remember what that is. I think he's a very underrated actor. He was in um the show with the ball guy with Portia, and it was really quirky. Uh, and then they redid some episodes much, much later. Uh, okay. According to his Wikipedia, Little House on the Prairie, Silver Spoons, The Hogan Family, Arrested Development, 
Arrested Development. That's what I'm talking about. Arrested okay. Development. I don't know why I thought he was in Hangover. Regardless, he's an underrated actor. And uh, Ozark is a good show. Do what do you? So I have this theory that like marketers watch too much marketing from um, other marketers when what they really should do is um, dissect the things that they consume and figure out how they can do it themselves. And so I recognized this when I was training for an Ironman last year, where I was like, oh, uh, and I call it the Ironman content strategy, where it's basically like. <laughs> um, you like that? <laughs> yeah, I do. So like it's that. like, what do you, what, what material do you enjoy to watch, and what hooks you to consume more, to follow them online, to do anything from a marketing perspective, and then how could you potentially use that type of stuff in your own world? So, what's something that's hooked you recently that you you weren't expecting to, but then you really went down, you know, a, a rabbit hole, if you will. Um, or what's something so like maybe from like a um, an environment perspective, is, <laughs> is you know like what what do you do in your free time that like you consume a lot of and how do they hook you I guess is really what it is. Mm, that's a hard question for me. I'm addicted to so many things. <laughs> I think um, for me, what hooks me every time is a great story and I think as a marketer that's basically what you're trying to tell every time which I know we will probably talk about over and over again but I'm all the shows that I'm interested in it's the story that gets me and I want I want more of the story so trying to tell a story instead of show a product is something that I'm interested in trying to um be genuine in, in I don't know how to say this being genuine in what I'm doing and engage people because I have a story to tell it is about my community my community has its own personality it has its own arc story arc and everything like that so just basically good stories good stories are what everybody's after you I mean, think in anything so maybe just think of this so like you see a thumbnail, right? So how do we consume things, right? So you do a Google search, you're looking for something, you see a thumbnail, you're on Netflix, you see a thumbnail, you know nothing about it. That thumbnail hooks you, right? You're like, oh, let me look at that a little bit more. Then that takes you to a trailer where you're you're looking for that story to tell you that thing about it. And if it's good enough, then you consume more. Add it to your watch list, yes. Got it, love it. Add to watch list. Interesting. What's something about you most people don't know about? Oh, gosh. No, everybody knows everything about me. It's, it's really... I don't even know anything. What don't you know about me, Zach? I didn't know you were a tree hugger until about an hour ago, but... <laughs> okay, I'm a tree hugger. Did you um, paint all those things behind you? Yes. So you're into painting? Yeah, I would say I'm into junk. I like junk. There you like, go. What's a tool that you can't live without? My computer. That's a broad tool, but I guess um, Google Analytics. Oh, you don't like Google right now. Why? You said. Oh, not... search engine analytics. Search engine analytics. <laughs> it's, so it's also like I try and find things that will get people to be like, huh? Because people go Google it, well, I'm, and I say search engine it, and they're like, "Huh?" It's the same thing with the S's and the Z's. People are like, "Huh? That's weird." And I'm like, "I'm doing it intentionally. Just get over it." Like, <laughs> people like, overthink okay. stuff. I'm just like, "Get over it." Like, it's 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 funny. Like, you should laugh more than worry about Zach Miller changing his S's to Z's or Z's to S's or whatever. Yeah. If someone wanted to get in front of your crowd, your apartment crowd, what's the best way? that they would actually get your group's attention? Or what's the best way that you've seen someone actually hook you guys? It doesn't have to be you in general. It can be Vama. It could be it could be an association that you're with. But like, what, what's something that kind of makes you go, Humor. Whoa. Humor. Humor, yes. So um, the... The job of a property manager is really challenging. Um, I don't know that people realize it, and there's a lot going on in the world that 
you know, is kind of anti landlord right now. But um, we deal with a lot of stuff like people live where we work, so they never go home. Um, so you're dealing with uh, births, deaths, uh, crimes, um, uh uh, happy moments in people's lives, sad moments in people's lives. And this is all part of your job that you do. So we, as an industry, I say, really enjoy uh, laughter. And we love to laugh and get together and just have a good time. So if there's somebody that comes and talks and is funny, we're all into it. So this made me take a note. I, I didn't mm -hmm. think about this. So you said anti-landlord time. So is that because a lot of people are saying, hey, I can't pay my rent, and they're dealing with that? Or they're just saying, don't pay your rent. And I have every sympathy if you can't pay your rent, um, because I know that this is uncharted water that we're going through together, and we will work with you if you cannot pay your rent. But just to say, don't pay your rent, I'm not paying your rent, causes a lot of problems that go on past my job and my industry into we pay mortgages, we pay taxes, we pay people who pay rent, we pay people who, you know, consume groceries. You just cause. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't I th and I think the biggest challenge with, so, so let's, let's backtrack to at least give this some context. So obviously we are, okay. So actually let me, let me say it like this. So it's the middle of April of 2020. We're 45 days into COVID world where, uh, a lot of this craziness is happening about 14 days ago. Obviously, a lot of rent and mortgages are due. And because of that, people who may have lost their income or reduced income are feeling the need to push back on some of their big bills. Then they go to you and say, hey, we can't pay this instead of um, maybe doing it in a more respectful manner of saying, hey, I can't uh, I can't pay this. Is there anything that I can do? Um, right, which would be at least start the uh, the conversation in a more communicative manner. That would be hard. words are hard. Zach. Wish sure Ooh, communicative. I can't say it twice. So words <laughs> that were um, say it in a way that would at least have the landlord appreciate you more than looking at you as a donkey, being like, "Well, this guy's being a you know a jackass to me. Like I don't want to talk to him." You know, and I and I and I get that, and so it's like. We, the way we treat people really can hurt or help the action that is next taken. And I don't think people think about that enough. And so if you're nice to someone, that person is probably more likely to be nice to you. But if you're a jerk to them, they're more likely to not like you and be a jerk back to you. And so maybe that yeah. wiggle room that was there no longer is there because... <laughs> They disrespected you. And so I don't think people think at any level, um, this is too generalized of a statement, but enough people aren't thinking about how many different levels of that person is being paid, right? From the person that's renting from you to the per, uh, just your um, uh, management corporation, signature management corporation, to the owner of the apartment complexes, which you guys may or may not own all of those things. I don't know. And then who their bankers are and then who owns the bank, uh, who owns that bank loan and then all these other people. Like there's multiple layers of this. And so it's my biggest beef with all this has been the lack of communication from other people saying, well, how do you want us to handle these things when there's so many unknowns? And so yeah. that's that's been difficult because I mean you then you think the last person who's renting it's all over the place. Yeah. Well, I was I was really proud of um, our company because we did reach out to our residents and we were like, hey, if you have a situation where you can't you know pay your rent, come in and talk to us and let's talk through it. Let's try to figure this out together because it's happening to so many people in our neighborhoods and in our communities. And if you're a good property management manager, you are trying to build a community. So you care about all these people that live at your apartments and you're trying to help them any way you can. So uh, I was very excited that we decided to try to help them and we're working through things with people and just, just keeping the lines of communication open to where like, Hey, you know, let's, let's figure this out together versus I don't, I don't care about what you're going through or, you know, 
that kind of attitude. Well, also, I think that like there's a lack of context oftentimes for even just that next layer, right? Like I, I don't, I don't know the financials of the business that you work at, right? But maybe per apartment, they don't make a lot of money, right? Maybe, maybe that's the case, right? But that person sitting there who is the tenant saying, oh, this guy's screwing me. This can't he be happening. It's, this, right? Yeah. And it's like, well, actually, you don't know the numbers. And so you're really speaking out of turn. And this person actually, you know, is making $10 a month off of you or something like that. Maybe a little more, but whatever it is. But like, it's like people just abruptly make these decisions and it's like, well, this person isn't really crushing it the way that you think they are. So, like, hold off, man. But but again, it comes back to this. Correctly communicating. And communicating with a smile on a face and saying please and thank you is love them or hate them is why Chick-fil-A has done so well. Yes. Yeah. Right? I mean, it, it it's true. It makes a difference. I mean, it's it's. I, I say this all the time. Fast food is all the exact same thing. It's a, it's a sandwich, a fry, and a drink. And the one that you will remember more than others is Chick-fil-A because they have great customer service, which is the pleases and the thank yous and the smiles. And, and they got longer lines than anyone else. And, and so people, I don't know why they forget about this stuff, but just, just communicate correctly. And it goes a long way. What's your favorite communication thing? Method? Yeah. Uh, I'm an emailer. Hmm. So when someone doesn't open your email... Then I'll probably call them. Do you think people are... I like to call people and tell them that I'm going to recap the conversation in email. <laughs> well, it seems like people are, are, are... I'm a big believer in um, in phone calls. I think they're great. I think you, yeah. you remove a lot of the unnecessary, uh, unnecessary miscommunication in email, the miscontext yeah. of an email. You get tone out of it. Right, yeah. same reason why I wanted to voice my book. Right, when you're reading, you can't get you, you miss tone sometimes, but um, people are afraid to call. Mm. Why? Oh, no, I'm not afraid to call. You're not, but a lot of people are. I mean, people would rather Facebook message you than call the. This is true. I think it's a generational thing. Okay. So, um, I think young younger people are more comfortable texting and, yeah. and communicating that way than they are by phone call, and they are really awkward on the phone. Um, whereas I grew up like pulling uh, my phone uh, Don, Don Jerry, closet, uh, is that you? Uh, how am I supposed to hiding, use that? Hiding in the closet, staying up late, talking on the phone. That's how I grew up. So I like to talk on the phone. Yeah, I guess that doesn't happen anymore. Hmm. That's sad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, ha- handwritten cards. They're handwritten cards. I, I what do. You, do. What do you think about them? <laughs> um, I like getting them. I got a card from you one time. And uh, I did, yes. Made me super happy. Um, I think it means something because it is an effort that you took to create something versus banging something out on a keyboard. It is something that you took your hand and wrote. So I think that's why it's meaningful to me. Um, But I'm a believer in sending people actual physical notes. Is there a follow-up that people are supposed to do when they get a card mm. what's the procedure in that like what's the i don't know because it, you can go down the rabbit hole of like thank you for your card thank you for thanking me for my card <laughs> thank you for thank you, <laughs> you and then you're just pen pals um with a lot of ps is ps stop stop sending me these cards ps you hang up <laughs> um i think acknowledging that you got the card is is good enough just in whatever way suits you whether you call or i yeah. sent you a linkedin message i was like thanks. you sure yeah okay <laughs> i was gonna say it took you 14 months to acknowledge it i was gonna say yeah. i don't know that, <laughs> that you did or did funny. not I don't remember but i appreciate that you appreciated that you got the appreciative note from me for whatever you, get you do need to work on your penmanship though let's just talk about that for okay, a moment i agree and I, was like, I agree I actually maybe want, I didn't even know who it was from. That that was probably happening. I'm not actually. gonna lie. I once sent a card to someone, and then I went to their event a few months later, and they go, "Hey, I got your card. I need you to read it to me because I can't <laughs> read it." And I was like, "This is great." <laughs> I was like, "Oh boy." Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So I've I've worked on that a little bit. 
I definitely um, it's definitely something I need to because most of the time I can read it, but then like even like I was taking notes with you today, and I'm like, I don't know what that word is. First nerve for her. And it's actually <laughs> Zach is the word that I wrote out, so I can't get it. <laughs> if someone was trying to get into marketing or trying to grow their existing brand or or grow a new brand or whatever, what's like the number one advice that you would give someone? I would say I would hearken back to what I said earlier and fill out every blank. So if you're trying to build a brand or you're trying to uh, be successful on a social media or whatever, fill in everything that you can think of to fill in. I mean, that's, that is half battle and get good photography. I do agree with you there. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of Zach Miller says it's been an absolute pleasure an honor and an absolute, I don't know why people say that. Look, I just appreciate you listening to this episode and I have this exclusively free once in a lifetime opportunity for you right now. It's simple. All you have to do is go to Zach Miller says dot com backslash newsletter to get my once a week email directly to your email client whatever you use like gmail yahoo aol aol yeah you could probably still use that but it's a once a week easy to dissect and execute tips tricks things i'm thinking about some content that i've been working on some entertainment and sometimes even the rock makes an appearance i'd love for you guys to check it out it's super free all you have to do is go to my name says dot com backslash newsletter that's zach z-a-c-k please don't spell it zh zach miller says dot com backslash newsletter and you'll get that access every monday morning 10 15 ish eastern standard time it will take up like 90 seconds of your day and it might actually even help you um, we'll just keep it at that. It might just help you because if I said something else, then I'd have to actually deliver on that. It might help you. Zach Miller says dot com backslash newsletter is the go to one stop shop to your weekly email newsletter needs. Check it out at Zach Miller says dot com backslash newsletter. Peace and pancakes. Bye bye now.